Now, let me ask you one other question. <clears throat> did you choose what you ate for breakfast this morning? And if you did, could you have chosen to eat something else if you had willed it so? Now, I think your answer to both of those questions is yes. Uh, I chose to eat uh, peanut butter, whole wheat toast with jam. It's kind of my standard breakfast, the first thing I get in the morning. And I had it with coffee. Now, I chose that. Now, I don't always choose that. I sometimes choose oatmeal. Um, and I sometimes choose it bacon and eggs. And when I was in Wisconsin, ooh, I had brats, bratwurst with eggs. That's a super treat. So I could have chosen otherwise in the decision I made about my breakfast this morning. And I suspect so could you have. So, when it comes to lots of things, breakfast, for example, and a whole host of other things, we can make choices in a way that it seems possible we could have made other choices. We could have done otherwise. But it also seems that there are some other choices, maybe a much smaller group of choices, that we don't have that kind of freedom. Uh, and I would put in this category, since based on, I suspect, what your answers to those first two questions were, choosing sin and could you have done otherwise, that rebellion against God that results in acts of sin against him are examples of the second kind of freedom. That is, things that you choose that you could not have done otherwise. And here I don't mean that you could not have done otherwise of that maybe in this particular act of sin, sometimes you could say, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to resist temptation. And by the way, you can do that without the Holy Spirit. There are people who resist temptation even though they don't have the Holy Spirit. It, this is an act of human will. could accomplish that, but no act of human will is going to allow you to do that all the time, is it? Your choice is inevitable. That someday, sometime, many times, actually, it turns out in our lives, we sin. Even though the choice is inevitable, it's still our choice, isn't it? It's choices that we make, and therefore we are responsible for them. Now, I want you to think about this. Doesn't this suggest that there are two different ways for an act to be free? One, an act is free if we choose it ourselves. In other words, it's our choice. The only condition for this kind of freedom is that we make the decision. Nobody's forcing us. There isn't some condition on the outside that requires us to act this way. We are not being dragged along or compelled by some exterior kind of uh, influence. We are free in, on the single condition that we choose the thing we choose of our own will and volition. And that's one sense of freedom. But there's another sense of freedom that has that condition to it, but adds a condition. In this second sense of freedom, an act is free if we choose it, in the sense that I just mentioned, and, and now comes the second condition, and we could have done otherwise. Now, philosophers call that libertarian freedom, generally, although there's some debate about the nature of that term. Generally, an act isn't free unless we choose it and we could have done otherwise. So it seems that the choices are a little bit more complicated than we thought at the beginning. It isn't just determinism on the one hand and freedom on the other. It is determinism on the one hand, uh, puppets on a string, dominoes falling in a, a deterministic fashion one after the other, um, or freedom in one of two or both senses. A choice that we make ourselves and couldn't have done otherwise, but it's still our choice because we wanted to do it and so we chose it. Or a choice that we make ourselves 
and though we wanted to do it and chose it, theoretically, we could have done otherwise.